I was thinking about what a friend had said I was hoping it was a lie Pocket watches have been a thing since the late 19th century. Who and what bought this unholy little time device? Yeah, it's true. A lot of people wrote in to say, why would they even have this? Because watches already existed at that time. The answer is this is a lot cheaper, that's all. Thank God for watches! You're close to New York? I never would have guessed by your accent. That is one of the heaviest New York accent I've heard recently. I'm near New York. We can tell, lol. 2 p.m. on the clonk. Here come the accent bros. I'm about to blow your mind. I'm from Boston. Did not need him to say he was in New York with that on the clonk. I don't think people say on the clunk in New York. That's just a stupid thing I made up. You had me until on the clunk. Until? What about at night though? Oh ho ho! <laughs> and if it's cloudy? Oh ho ho! <laughs> That's really cool. Guess you had to run outside to check the time always through, lol. Oh ho ho! <laughs> Yo, got the time? No, it's cloudy. Oh ho ho! So, at night? Oh! So, what time is it? I don't know. It's night. The sundial only works during daytime. Oh! It's cloudy. Oh! And if it's cloudy? Oh ho ho! <laughs> How's it work in the PM? It worked okay for me at 2 p.m. on the clock. Deviation changes. You gotta adjust for that. Yeah, I know. I discussed this in the longer video, but thanks to the hundreds of people who chimed in on this point, the Earth's magnetic field is slightly unstable and it changes over time. So the 10 degree figure that I was using is slightly out of date at this point. For me, where I am, it's more like 13. As the magnetic pole moves, it needs an updated chart. That's actually a good idea. It wouldn't be too hard to print out a different chart with all updated numbers on it. Get on that. I wonder if any of the magnetic deviation has changed at all since the production of this sundial. Yes, it has. About three degrees for me. I haven't come across a comment yet that mentions the rapid shifting of magnetic north. Keep reading, bro. Works as great as long as you remember to wind the sun every morning. Haha, <laughs> I like that one. Just think, there are kids today who can't even read analog clocks. I know people love complaining about how dumb kids are these days, but come on, they're fine. Reading an analog clock is like reading cursive handwriting or reading uh, Roman numerals or something. People don't teach kids these days, so they don't know how to do it. But American kids' lives are dramatically different today than they were even 20 years ago. And yeah, some kids don't know like how many pints are in a quart, but whatever. It's because they don't care. They'll be fine. Kids these days will be clueless about these instructions due to Common Core curriculum. Now we have Common Core Math. It's always a matter of time before somebody shows up to complain about Common Core Math curriculum. Adults ask me this all the time. Why do they gotta change math? Why don't they just teach it the way I learned it? Well, how do you feel about math right now? Oh, I hate math. I'm terrible at it. Well, that's why we gotta change it. I'm going equations? Uh-oh. It's not that I can't do math. It's that all math taught me is how to be wrong. That's what I'm talking about. Just in case we forget continents exist, we have this. What? Just to be clear, a sundial can't work on a flat earth. Wonder how flat earthers explains this, lol. I didn't know this before, but flat earthers love sundials. Another proof the earth is stationary. You can't use this with the heliocentric model. Prove me wrong, I bet you can't. They only work on a non-rotating stationary plane. Think about it. I thought about it, I think. Here's a crude yet mathematically accurate 3D model of a round Earth with a distant sun orbiting at the equator. I'm making the camera rotate too, just to keep the sundial stationary in the frame. Anyway, the shadow moves across the plate in a repeatable, predictable way, so you could put markings on this thing and use it as a sundial. And what about a flat Earth? Well, the usual picture these days is a disc-shaped Earth with a nearby sun that works kind of like a spotlight. And what do you know? Again, the shadow moves in a repeatable, predictable way. So you could put markings on this thing and use it as a sundial. So the existence of a working sundial doesn't prove anything one way or another. But here's the easy. The geometry describing how the shadows would change is different in each scenario. So we can just do the math and see which one is accurate to real life. I know math is hard, but sometimes that's what it takes to understand the world properly. You gotta work for it. And if you're unwilling or unable to put in the work, that's okay. I mean, most people don't know trigonometry, and that's fine. Just maybe don't present yourself as a science expert.
The pointy thing is called a gnomon. Yeah, I know what it's called. I made a silly joke about it in the other video. <laughs> English has names for things. The pointy thing is a gnomon. If I was a YouTuber, I would learn something about what I was YouTubering about first. That's a burn right there. Lost respect for him when he said, pull of the pointy thing. Not exactly what I said. The pointy thing is a gnomon, Mr. Educated in America. Hey, I don't know everything, but I am fairly well educated. You can look it up. Is the pointy thing a actual term in the USA? I didn't heard that for the first time. The pointy shadow thing is called a no man. The pointy thing is called the no men. The no men. Pointy thing is called the gnomem. Pronounced no men. All right. Pointy thing is called the dial. <laughs> the dial. <laughs> when people were smarter. Tons of people chimed in about how people were a lot smarter back then. I'm not really buying it. We were so much smarter back then. Now we have women's studies. Yeah, because back in the days, everybody was smarter than this generation. Everybody? I don't think everybody was smarter back in the day. I bet if you took the average person today and compared them against the average person back then, I'm on today. Good to know, world just copies India discoveries. Hashtag being proud on hashtag Indian civilization methods. Thank you, India. Alanis. It sounds like they're saying that the sundial was invented in India. I mean, India has invented tons of amazing things, but I don't think this time. Uh, the earliest archaeological sundials appear to be in Egypt. India does have some pretty amazing big sundials, though. People also ask Google, how many sundials are there in India? Apparently, it's five. Five sundials in India. Man, I, you know, I got one. I don't know anybody in India, but I could, like, send you guys one. Get you to six. Magnetic variation, not deviation. Magnetic declination, not deviation. Variation. Okay, the compass bros are here. There's three words. Variation, deviation, and declination. And I used the wrong one, technically. Variation is the difference between the compass reading and the true north, which is due to asymmetries in the magnetic field of the Earth. Deviation is a difference on the compass that's caused by nearby objects. I said deviation when I should have said variation. Sorry, bros. I think I need this, Nuggle. This looks so classy, Nuggle. Nuggle, I agree. What would the cost of this be today? How much? Or where can I buy one? I... I got mine on eBay for $45, including the original instructions. Once the video got a lot of views, the prices kind of shot up, but hopefully they'll be back to normal pretty soon. Why does time sound like an algebraic equation? Well, time is part of the universe, so what else do you expect? It's math. Be easy with it. Handle with care. Don't horse it. I, I would never horse it. This sort of proves that there's so much more we don't even understand. I don't think it proves that. I mean, a, a sundial, we understand everything about a sundial, right? I, there are things we don't understand, but this, does, this, ain't, this ain't it. What does those ridges mean on your nails? Hey man, the ridges in your nails are screaming. Is this what it's like to be a woman online? I should ask that woman's studies guy. Very cool. That item took as much thought, if not more thought, as a current tech watch. Old technology is really amazing as compared to today's modern digital technology. And we think we are the ones who have the crown on tech? People were far more clever back then. Old technology is kind of amazing, but it's not better than modern technology. Like this thing, it's cute and very clever, but I can make one myself if you gave me enough time. It's not easy, but you know, I'm a mathematician and I could probably work out the details by hand if you give me a day or so. But I could never build a smartphone by myself. Not me, not nobody. So don't say this tech is better than modern stuff. It's not. I think what you're feeling is the satisfaction of understanding how it works. This thing is a sundial. A typical person basically understands how it works, and you can appreciate all the historical knowledge that went into creating it. But this might as well be magic. Almost nothing about it is immediately understandable, and so the way we appreciate this thing is totally different. Not a pizza thief says it well. Microchips and processors and stuff are super impressive, but I have zero idea how they work, so my brain doesn't really recognize the effort that went into it. They're just magic. But I know how gears and springs and levers work, so I can recognize how much genius is required to arrange those simple parts into a complex machine. I know I could never do it, but at least I'd know where to start. That's what impresses me. 
I totally agree and this is exactly my vision for most of my videos on YouTube. Some pieces of technology are too simple to be interesting and some are too complicated to be interesting. But there's a sweet spot in the middle where you say, hey, this is complicated, but the idea of it is beautiful and I get it. That's the good stuff. More work went into making that than you. More work went into making that than me. I, get, I think that's, is that true? I think that's true. Wait, so have we always been two minutes wrong or were they two minutes behind? I think the magnetic deviation is now 12 degrees in New York, so that corrects for you two minutes. A lot of people focused on the fact that my reading was two minutes off. I read 1.58 p.m. and the true time was 2 p.m. The two min deviation comes from the fact he's not exactly in New York City. I didn't really expect this reaction. To me, being within two minutes is way more accurate than I expected. And to be honest, two minutes is not typical with this device. I did it a lot of times in the longer video and you can see the typical accuracy is like 10 to 20 minutes off. But it's not because of the magnetic deviation or because my phone is somehow wrong. It's because of this scale. Each marking on the scale represents 15 minutes and there's just no way to precisely read the time down to the minute. Could you really tell the difference between 305 and 307 on this thing? Of course not. The Ansonia Sunwatch, a rare and elegant timepiece from 1927, boasting an exquisite blend of art deco and modernist design elements. Its intricately crafted sunburst dial gleaming with a warm golden light, reminiscent of a bygone era when horology was an art form. Yes. Too much math, but wow. Crazy amount of calculations needed for that, lol. Can we just refresh our memory? The calculations I did was add four, then subtract two. I think we can handle this. So you basically had to have at least a high school education to operate one of these. High school? I, I don't think so. Never before a watch has required a master's degree to be read. A master's degree. Now we're talking. So anyway, you need a doctorate to use this item. Great inflation, man. My grandfather used one while he served on a submarine. Uh-huh, hey, had to think about that one a little bit. 